So if you've been following the channel for a while, you know we've been playing with energy harvesters and I thought it was time for us to get back to actually testing energy harvesters and IoT devices. So today we're going to be looking at an IoT device and some tests I actually ran as well as the next steps and what we want to do with this project moving forward. So taking a look at the setup as to what we've been testing so far is I've got two different uh, energy harvesting chips here. One is from EPs. I'll put a link in the description below as to what the chip number is, as well as a BQ chip from TI Instruments. And just for simplicity reason, I carried on testing with the uh, BQ chip because it's got a bit easier interface and easier to modify than the um, EPs device. So what you see here is actually a LoRa SX1262 transceiver and a Arduino Pro Mini which has been hacked together just for a test and this Arduino has actually been programmed to be um, as low power state as I can get it for the purpose of this test but some more work can be done here as well as um, the next steps for this project which is more towards the end of this video. Now just to explain a bit of the setup here I've got three solar panels attached in parallel and they attach to the BQ chip's input and the only thing that is on this BQ chip actually is a, I think it's a 217 uh, millifarad supercapacitor as the V-store element and then I've got another 470 millifarad capacitor on the battery input and all this device does is when it's charged up the um, battery storage unit to a certain level there's a pin that asserts and that will actually turn on the output. The moment the output turns on, it will start up the Arduino. The Arduino has an input for the interrupt pin to say whether the battery or the V storage unit is good enough, and it will start transmitting from the every three minutes. Now, to test how long this device could actually stay alive, what I ended up doing was is writing a little program, and I'll show you the results now, where this device would wake up in every three minute cycles and count a clock and every time it had a successful transmission that clock count would actually be transmitted as well as the storage elements battery voltage and what that allowed me to do was was place this device somewhere in a ambient light condition as well as outside and see how many cycles was actually successfully um, counted and then transmitted as a result so taking a quick look at the setup Basically, Arduino code was just using um, pre-existing libraries, the low power library from the Rocket Labs guys, as well as the Radiolip library from uh, Jan. And I'll link the both libraries in the description below, as well as the source code for this little project. It's nothing special, but I'm not going to go through the detail of the code in this video. Feel free to have a look at it, as well as the libraries. It makes life a lot easier. And on the other side, you can see the, the sort of device transmitting. Now, before I explain the device results, um, it's worthwhile noting that we actually took the device and put it on a dual scope, which is a current monitoring device, just to see where the device actually was sitting when it went into sleep mode. And what you can see from the, the current mode here is, is we were sitting around four microamps, which is quite good for a IoT device. But I had an annoying occurrence where every time the device transmitted, it wouldn't go fully back to sleep so between cycles the device actually um, went into standby around 500 microamps instead of back to the 4 microamps but it turned out not to matter and it just validated the test a bit more simply because it added a constant load on the device and showed that the batteries could still charge or the super cap could still charge even although there was a 500 microamp load continuously on the device which is or which was quite surprising to me and so after placing the device in different conditions, um, the results pretty much repeated itself. But starting from the top, you can see that the cycle count was cycle one. And then you could also see the timestamp on the side. And every time you see a cycle skip was basically when the super cap uh, reached below the, the allowable threshold and the device cycled a few more times until the battery charged up again. The millivolt didn't quite work this time around. Um, I've got some issues with regards to the code that are starting to debug. But you can see that over a period of three hours, um, the device actually did fairly well in terms of transmitting a message, rebooting, transmitting a message. And the device was set up to check the battery level every three minutes and then try to repeat. And there was quite a few 
sections where it was able to transmit um, consecutively but I was more impressed with the fact that it was able to stay alive and monitor the situation and keep trans transmitting when and where needed. And so that's a working concept of a batteryless IoT system using LoRa. And the reason why this is impressive is because the LoRa radio is actually meant to be a very long range radio. I could have used Bluetooth or any other type of uh, short range communication protocol or transceiver that would far be better suited for this type of application. But the reason why I selected LoRa is because LoRa is quite a power intensive requirement. Now, as you can see, there is some merit in, the, in this approach. Um, it's working, but I don't know about you, but I'm not really satisfied. So let me show you quickly what we're actually doing about this and the next steps. So what I have here is the basis of a custom board that I will be laying out and producing to test this and I thought at the same time while producing this board it might be a good idea to tackle the application of smart farming as well. So we're actually going to be laying out this little board 100% batteryless whether it's going to be ceramic capacitors from companies that specializes in super capacitors for this type of application remains to be seen but this is meant to be an actual little development board for testing energy harvesters in different light conditions on the device itself, we have a photodiode or photoresistor to measure the light slant temperatures. We've got the actual BQ chip for energy harvesting, a bank of capacitors. Now the value of the capacitors here doesn't really matter. It's just a placeholder. Then we have some uh, comparator inputs for the soil sensors, as well as a temperature and humidity sensor. And then obviously a nice RF SX1262 LoRaWAN radio which uh, is used to transmit the data. If we switch over to the quickly the board view you can sort of see the, the layout, you've got the antenna at the top, you've got the microcontroller, the BQ chip, you have the V-Store capacitor bank, uh, the front end circuitry around, around the app, actual application for smart farming and if you look at the back there is the LoRaWAN radio as well as the capacitor bank. Now, this capacitor bank can actually be swapped out and that's where we'll add the supercapacitor of different sizes to properly test this. And then obviously at the bottom of the board is a few connectors. These are actually for the sensors. The two point connector over here is for the solar panel input as to what we'll be using to do this. And the idea behind this is really to get to a point where we'll do the flat, or what I would like to call the flat electronics. And what I mean by that is, it's really a sort of a self-contained product that has a very minimal height profile that could be stuck against the wall and be out of line of sight or look ugly. Uh, this is obviously just a mock product or products as to how it could look. The antenna could be integrated, the battery could be integrated, and you can do any sort of discontinuous applications, things like a doorbell, um, notifications or once a day air quality or once a day temperature readings or and I'm just saying once a day because that's sort of the least that you want to get the data but as we saw from the tests it's actually able to carry itself for about three or four hours on a single charge now spread that out over a day and you can quickly see how you can start building a trend that's actually usable for these sort of applications so quite excited about this let's see how it carries on but that's it from me Thank you for watching.